Welcome into the KSO Show. I am Mason Voth. That is Derek Young, and we are here ready to preview the Cats and the Cougs. K-State football's first experience with Big 12 after dark. 9.30 kick central time, 8.30 if you're going to be out in the mountains of Utah with K-State as they try to uh, take down the Cougars in their wide out and see just what everything is going on in uh, Provo, Utah late at night other than a football game, either before or after the game gets started. Before we dive into the full preview, let's hit on uh, what K-State will be doing to start next season because the Wildcats are headed to Dublin, Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at cats2ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. So we get that done with and uh, time to move on to talk about K-State and BYU. The Wildcats, six and a half point favorites now against BYU. That line's kind of danced around there quite a bit, but the consensus is K-State right around a touchdown favorite on the road. Before we even dive into what you think of this matchup, D.Y., what does that line tell you that uh, the very smart people in Vegas think of K-State going on the road to Provo? You remember when it was seven and a half last week? I was like, people are just, the books just want you to pick Arizona because they're trying to trap you. Mm -hmm. I I don't know that there is a conclusion to take here because you would expect people to want to take Kansas State. But I think even the public better is going to bake into that atmosphere of BYU, the wideout. It's a night game. It's Lavelle Edwards Stadium. I think even the the common betters kind of play into that. So I don't, this week is not one of those things where I think the line is going to tell us one way or another. I will say this, if it's if it's a game that's really low scoring, that probably benefits BYU. If it's a little bit more, that probably benefits Kansas State. Oh, well, that's uh, that's that's good to, to keep in the minds of everybody uh, when we talk about best bets later on Yeah, uh, because of just, what just, DY has to say. Just because I, I don't really believe in BYU's offense. I mm-hmm. mean, and I don't know if we should believe in their defense either because it's been against like really bad offense yeah. at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, the best team they've played is SMU, who very easily could have lost Nevada. Yeah, they, they've, they're trying to play two quarterbacks. Neither of them have played well. So it, BYU's a little bit of a, an enigma. I think them being 3-0, they deserve credit for that. I think that's maybe better than what some yeah. would have anticipated. The 3-0 gets a spread is yeah. reflective of that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't think BYU is just some slouch. I still don't think, you know, you see the three and oh, there's a good chance by the end of the season that BYU's best case scenario is still six and six. Six and six, maybe seven and five. Yeah. It just yeah. depends. And if Red's laugh wouldn't turn a ball over every time he goes back, I mean, that's his that's their problem. He plays like Kalani coaches. Like I'm just Great it's point. Like, he's like, I'm going to take all the gambles and the risk in the world and the, let the chits fall where they may. That's, By the way, you got your lavender on today. No, no, no other team. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, it's just a normal Nike shirt. I saw what you were wearing earlier. I like I'm it a still lot. Still bringing the Pac-12 back to life this week. I've been all Pac-12. Yeah, we we pronounced their their funeral a little too early. Mm-hmm. Need two it, more teams. It, though, it's though. still dead. It's you know, it's kind of like. You, uh, I like mean, Toys R Us, Toys R Us actually died, but even though it's out there in name, somebody else has it. It's there's not the one real blockbuster deal. left, right? Yeah, there's, there's still one blockbuster. Yeah. Left. They knew they do need two more teams still, so we're still yeah. a little short. UNLV, you're next. Mm, maybe or Tulane and Memphis, uh, yeah. even though the AAC commission is working hard to try and keep those teams. You like around. this guy better than Mike Oresco? I know you hated Mike Oresco. Uh, yeah, I hate I hated Mike Oresco. His fingers are still all over that crappy, godforsaken league. Um, I don't know. This guy seems like maybe he's just as stupid as Mike Oresco, uh, <laughs> thinking that the AAC is some good conference for everybody to be in. It sounds like they might get Air Force. I guess that's the defense. Yeah, that, I mean, if that's a move that helps you out, uh, I can't help you as somebody that actually <laughs> enjoys watching teams play college football and not walk around, get tackled, and score five points in a game. Uh, yeah, I, the service academies – Thank you for your service. I don't care to ever watch you play football. It's thank, just not for thank me. Thank you for your service. Please, please play something else. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you're going on the road and losing to Baylor 31-3, to who doesn't have a quarterback and has a head coach that's going to get fired at the end of the season, 
you're not you're not anything special. That does not move the needle. But um, you'll get some good Patriots to watch the AAC, and it makes sense. The American Athletic Conference should have all three service academies. American, in it. Yep. yep. So there you go. They're finally living up to their namesake. Uh, all right, little serious talk. K State BYU. We always like to kind of talk about what you think K State can and can't do against the Cougars. Let's start with the K State offense that took some serious steps in the right direction on Friday night against Arizona. Uh, and they put up 31 points. They were, well, 24 points because Dylan Edwards had seven of it off of a kick return. And it just felt like the flow was a lot better for them. There are still some mistakes, Absolutely. still some issues, but it they're inching closer, maybe you know more than inches uh, based on what they did on Friday. What do you expect the matchup between the K-State offense and BYU defense to look like? Because you already said BYU's defense has done a good job of shutting some teams down, but they're not very good teams. Yeah, the BYU's defensive numbers are great. But then I look back at their defensive numbers last year. They were dreadful. And I look at what the offenses they are facing so far, dreadful. So I just I don't know what to take from them other than Tyler Batty is an excellent defensive end. Like, he is a handful. And that'll be a tough challenge for the offensive tackles of Kansas State. What has worked so far against BYU is kind of what was working against Arizona before K-State played them. The quarterback run. BYU has been gashed by quarterbacks in the run game so far. So I don't know if anybody knows this, but Avery Johnson, <laughs> not a bad runner of the football. So I, I, you don't want to bust it out like 17 times again. Now I know some of those were scrambles. Some of those were based on and dictated by the read. And I know he got like hit, I think, on less than half of those 17 carries, which is a good thing. I just I don't want to get in a habit of running Avery Johnson 17 times either. Yeah, I mean, the, where do you expect the Avery Johnson run game usage to be versus what it was against Arizona? Because I like eight to ten. How how much of the Arizona game and, and the way it played out? Do you think that's what the real offense might end up looking like, or do you think that was a specific? We know Arizona can be a victim of the quarterback run. Let's use it here. We haven't used both. it yet. Big game, knock it out and and surprise them. A little bit of both. I think it was Arizona's not good at this. So let's exploit them. It was we gotta we gotta scramble and take off here a few times. It was Arizona being the first team, I think, on the Kansas State schedule to say we're gonna take away the running back here a few times. And on the you know, the zone read, they were in the zone read a little bit more than they did the first two weeks. And when they did, Arizona didn't force the the give like Tulane and UT Martin did. They forced the keep, so Avery was able to take off. He, he only messed up on one or two, and I think they might have ran it that play eight to ten times the zone read. Now, I I think I would be comfortable with the number being in the eight to ten range, five designed, and then. If you got to scramble three or four times, go for it. I don't care. And because on scrambles, you can you can typically avoid the hit anyway, so those don't bother me as much anyway. What the issue becomes is zone read. The defense is going to dictate if the quarterback's going to run or not too. So it it's kind of a feel thing. I thought Connor Riley did a great job. Seventeen sounds like a large number, but it just never. There was one good lick I think Avery took maybe out of the 17 times, I just never felt concerned about Avery getting beat up in that game. We talked to him on Monday. I don't know that everyone's watched that press conference with Avery Johnson yet from earlier this week. If you have it, you can on the K-State Online YouTube page. Um, subscribe, like us, do all, all those things that will help us out. But he said he actually felt healthier after the Arizona game than he did tonight. Yeah, which I, you know, I think I think can make sense in some ways because – the Tulane game was a lot more of a grind. I think there's a difference between um, the way that you're able to play and the way that the the style of hits that you're taking and uh, also just more comfortable weather uh, on Friday night versus what they experience against Tulane. In terms of, and you're right about the BYU defense uh, on a handful of occasions there. If you go and look at some of like the, the defensive efficiency stuff for BYU, Despite the fact that they've played pretty well this year and they've only given up a total of uh, 42 points on the season, 
they're still outside the top 30 uh, in, in the efficiency numbers, and they, uh, defensively speaking. And they're still, I think, outside the top 45 uh, overall. And we listened to most of the SMU game before we were able to watch it when we were traveling down to New Orleans. And SMU's real issue in that game was that they weren't able to finish things off because they didn't have a quarterback. They got to the they got into BYU territory almost every possession that night, and they only came away with five made field goals and a handful of turnovers. They ran the ball with Jennings. Yeah. Yeah. It just so there is a scenario and there's a world where it can be done against them. And that also highlights that BYU they struggled in in their return coverage at times in that game against SMU, setting SMU up for decent field position, same type of thing with the turnovers. So the possibility will be there for the K-State offense, and there's no doubt that this is the best that BYU has faced all year. It's just a matter of K-State is going to face good resistance from BYU. Their offense has to probably be at the same level it was against Arizona, if not a step better to make sure you can really go in and assert yourself and finish drives off. And if they do that, then I don't think there should be very many concerns about K-State's performance against BYU. Despite not thinking they're very good, SMU is still probably the toughest team that BYU played, right? Southern Illinois, Wyoming. SMU probably beats UT Martin. They definitely lose to Arizona, I'm guessing. Does SMU lose to the Tulane? I mean... So yeah, I would I would I would take Tulane over SMU pretty easily. Yeah, so K State's played two teams fe- tougher than than what um, BYU has played so far. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thinking of K State's defense, which they they bend it a lot, but they didn't break. There was a lot of empty yardage for Arizona in that game uh, on Friday night, and only held them to seven points. That's a big deal. Facing this BYU offense, where Jake Redslaff turnover prone there's injury concerns at the running back spot so probably going to be a lot of quarterback run for red slaff or the ball going in the air what's your expectation for the k-state defense in this one red slaff has now started seven games three games this year and the last four of last year do you know how many interceptions he's thrown in those seven games i'm gonna cheat a little bit and i believe it is six it is. Do you know? I read many... Drew's players to watch today. So, oh, gotcha. Do you know how many times he's fumbled in those seven games? Uh, I don't know. I d- did see that he likes to put on the, the ground. I'm going to guess five. He's lost four. Okay. But he's fumbled in those seven games nine uh, times. That's a lot. Nine times. We got. <laughs> so let, let, let's not just look at the ones he lost. He's fumbled nine times, thrown six picks. That's putting the ball in harm's way 15 times in seven games. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and some of those teams are pretty much dog crap too. Like, I mean, that counts some really bad teams in those seven games. Yeah. His starts last year came against West Virginia, Iowa state, Oklahoma, Oklahoma state. And then the ones this year to start, like we talked about Southern Illinois, SMU, Wyoming, not very good um, there. So there's a lot of, I'm trying to think of the best comfort. I, uh, is Jake Retzlaff like a younger Donovan Smith where he can make some plays with his legs? He can at times beat you and you go, hey, they, they might have something here. And other times you're like, dude, j- your brain has shut off. You need to just hang on to the football. Yeah, maybe. I just, he is like his head coach. He yep. plays with reckless abandonment. And sometimes it's going to be for the betterment of BYU. And you're like, how the hell did they just do that? And you're like, wow, that was a really good play, but that same strategy makes it, what are you doing at the same time, which is, I think, how BYU fans probably think about Kalani Sataki as a head coach. Drew said it best earlier this week, and he said it a few times since, and and the more I study BYU, the more correct I think he is. It's just such a wide variance because of the way their quarterback plays and the way their head coach coaches. Like They can be absolute dog crap and get blown out by 50 points at home. They basically did last year against Iowa State. Or they can rise up and play the best game of their freaking season and scare you. So, yeah, it's there there is it's feast or famine here. And and we talk about Kalani Sataki a lot and how he's going to take some serious gambles. To illustrate that for people, there's only been three games this season. BYU is 
third or is fourth in the country in fourth down attempts. They're eight of ten on fourth down. The only three teams ahead of them, FAU for some reason, uh, West Virginia, who has been obviously in a close game with Pitt, and then taking some gambles against Penn State, and then Air Force, which the service academy is the way they play. If you go back and look at 2023, um, BYU last year, actually not as high as you would have thought, only 26, but they struggled a little bit earlier on. Probably because uh, they didn't have enough chances because it was so bad. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's here's another one before you get into BYU BYU's really bad on third down. They're good on fourth down. They're bad on third down. I think they're bad on third down probably almost by design because they're calling plays knowing that they'll mm-hmm. go for it on fourth. They are 11 of 39 on third down this year, but you said it. They went for it on fourth down on a third of those after those third down attempts. So, like, actually, no, if you get it for 11 on 39, so you didn't get it on 28, and they went for it on 10 of those 28. Yeah, yeah. No, and it's just Kalani Sataki will take some gambles. It'll be calculated. Um at times and other times the situation will call for him to to let it go and some of that goes off of what they've done against smu uh that smu game both sides were kind of just in weird spots so they were going for it quite a bit but he's going to take some risks he's always been this way and it's the same type of deal where if k-state finds themselves in a game late and byu has scored a touchdown i have no doubt they're going for two to try and win the game versus kicking the extra point and keeping it tied similar to what tulane was going to do they uh, actually Went for on fourth down more against Southern Illinois. I don't know. Oh, that's, that's that's kicking a man while he's down there. <laughs> Come on, Kalani. Uh, the, I think that they're going to be. That'll be something to watch. This is why K State just jumping out to a good lead early and kind of suppressing the crowd, but also the squirreliness of BYU and their decision making is really significant. I think so. This is another game where you have to have a fast start. K State did it against Arizona but then it wasn't sustained enough. It was a fast start and then a lull. You need that fast start and then just kind of keep that thing humming right there. Like the the battery is is almost dead. You had a jump start it. Do not let the car die again. Like don't turn it off. Just keep it running. You know, don't, don't I mess. Mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's great. That's basically asking for almost a perfect game every night. Uh, like, uh, I like, mean, yeah, kind uh, of, but in some, like, you're like you, you start out hot and then you just stay hot. You no, 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 no. You don't have to push. stay hot. Just, like, don't don't score, score, and then just nothingness like we saw uh, against Arizona. Like, toss in a field goal made or like a you well, know they tried to touchdown. missed it yeah. exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Make them, you know. Come on, uh, <laughs> knock that out. That's I'm not asking for perfection, although it would be very nice, and it may sound like that's what I'm uh, asking for. Uh, anything else on BYU or K State matchup wise that you uh, want to point out to everybody before we move on? No, I would just say I, I like the idea of a hot start too um, for all the reasons you mentioned, but also you can kind of maybe start to BYU self-reflect and get into their own heads a little bit because they started out pretty well last year and then just crumbled down the stretch. Yeah, I think they went one in five or one in six their last six or seven games. So yeah, after a pretty good start. And one, uh, yeah, And then finished the year five and seven. So they, they, that could be like, oh, here we go again. Another hot start and now we get drilled. Kind of feels like last year, although they were competitive in a lot of games, I will say. Yeah, Uh, I'll I'll make this maybe a regular question for you because we're talking about fast starts, and it's you know Chris Kleiman at times when he's feeling himself and his team, he's going to go out there. They win the toss, they want the ball. So is this a situation where if K State, you win the toss, are you kicking or taking the ball? Because I feel like I have the better team. I mean, I'm kind of team defer all the way here. (laughs) The fast start. Makes sense. I I think you can still do that with your defense because you're not worried about Retzloff as a really good quarterback. Okay. All right. DY thinks everything's fixed now. K State defense, no concerns. Which maybe is a good question to ask you. Do they talked about it was little mistakes that you just you could fix Fixed. quickly and it's fine after two lanes. Do you think they did that for the most part? Fixed might be hyperbole. I need to see a little bit more. Um, but I am comfortable with where they are. Okay. I'm That's not, fun. I'll take that. I, I'm not like a hundred percent worry free, but I'm comfortable. And I don't know that BYU, like, I don't know that Ritzoff is good enough to, to feel scared. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm okay with you saying you're comfortable with the defense right now. That makes me comfortable. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to K-State BYU at the end with our MVPs and picks for the game, but let's shift into our best bets for the week. Uh, D-Y, do you know how you did last week? Let me guess, 0-3. It was 0-3, yeah. Uh, LSU won, but did not cover the seven, which <sighs> kind of surprised me. UCF won, did not cover the two and they a half. They started too late. They started too yes, late. <laughs> they did, and then Tulane and OU – uh, just yeah, slightly that was went never over. close. Yeah, that well, that felt like that was going to be a shootout for a while too. So I got yeah. lucky it was as close as it was. Uh, for me, Alabama, that was easy. Arizona State, a little bit of drama. They got it done. The only uh, real issue that I had was Michigan, who did not cover their twenty-two and a half, and they got off to a decent start with it. But Davis Warren, just I mean, I told you, I told you, they could give up three points and still not cover. Like that <laughs> offense is brutal. It's, uh, they're Iowa, right? They're Iowa. They are. They are Iowa. They're like a better version of Iowa, maybe. But man, Davis Warren did not do me any lost solid. Yeah, lost it to Alex Orgy, so they're going to give that a go now. But uh, they let Arkansas State score 15 points in the fourth quarter uh, hmm. after they jumped out to a 28 to three lead, uh, and they were up 28 to three with under six minutes to play. So I thought I was sitting pretty, and then they uh, just started letting. Uh, Arkansas State torch which by the way, Arkansas State getting ready to go to Iowa State. Do you know who their quarterback is this year? No, I don't. He faced K State last year. It's Timmy McLean, the former no. UCF backup. So, uh, that might be one to watch in Ames this weekend, and we'll talk about that later on in the show. Here are this week's best bets now. As I uh, am above 500, D White will try to fight back there. Uh, DY just all unders this week, and he thinks all the games are going to play out like a game with a service academy. Which, by golly, he's got one of those AAC service <laughs> yeah, academies in there. I have, I have all unders, and you have all favorites. Yes, yep, yep, exactly. I'm just exploiting everybody. I take Colorado <laughs> minus one and a half. You know, I hate Deion Sanders and everything, uh, he's got going on at Colorado. They're just so clearly better than Baylor, though. And th Colorado this year is better than Colorado last year. One and a half should be no problem at home against a team that doesn't know what they're doing at quarterback. TCU minus two and a half. I think SMU is disgusting and gross. I think Sonny Dykes knows that this is a big game for him uh, because if he loses that one, then the faith in him is way down, and TCU has to start thinking about uncomfortable conversations by the end of the year. And then I think I've bet a Michigan – something <laughs> all season and i'm going back to the well but i'm taking the trojans of usc this time minus the five and a half because like we just talked about the wolverines don't have an offense i think usc is actually pretty decent uh this year relative to expectation that i'm a little nervous about that and i wavered between tulane minus two and a half at louisiana oh, well, I, or my best Tennessee on, minus six and a half at ou the, my best bet on three mall and i tried not to overlap was Tulane. I kind of like that. I don't think Louisiana's as good as they usually are. Is that really a road game when you're staying in the state? I think Tulane's probably better than most than the the markets are giving them credit for. I did stay away from that USC one because I feared the Michigan wounded animal prideful approach, like national championship pedigree, like pissed off at the world, just rise up for one week and say screw everybody. Right. Well, I'm not scared of it. So. <laughs> okay. That that, right worries, on. that that's what worries me. I also worry about TCU just because they can't play with a lead. So yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a little dicey. And the good news is, if they do get a lead, SMU can't throw the ball to get the lead back. So that would be True. the one thing. And I've got I'm going from frogs to fight on this week. So I've got my uh, little hand symbol. I like Colorado, there. and I like Colorado. I uh, explain your unders this week. Ohio State Marshall, Ohio State on off week, I could see them start slow enough to where they don't score enough points for that to go over because I don't think Marshall's going to score, right? I, I don't. I think teams are going to have a hard time scoring on Ohio State in general this year. Yeah, it might be the best defense in the country. So if Ohio State doesn't score forty five, I don't know that that goes over. Yeah. That's how. I, that's how I see it. And they're coming off like they had a weird off week in week three. I think. When you first start to play your two games and you have a bye week in week three, I think that's a weird time to have it. It can really give you a cold spell maybe then that week four game. So that's Iowa kinda, State against Arkansas State. Watch out. Same deal. Yep. So that's kind of what I'm baking on. Memphis Navy, 
Well, first, obviously low possession game. And I think Memphis, I, I don't know that beating Florida State's necessarily anything to write home about. Don't get me wrong. But it still might mean something to those Memphis players. And if they kind of get that into their head and don't play well for four quarters, I don't know how that, that game goes over with the way the Navy plays. So I just, uh, I felt good about that. Utah, Oklahoma State, look, I'm going with the coaches in that game. They would rather the total be 15 than 50. Like, yeah, that they, they would rather that game play in a phone booth. They'd probably rather be in a wrestling ring and just go play That's box true. for a little bit. Like, the two coaches in that game are not conducive to an over when they are playing each other. Yeah. It'll be uh, I, I I like I like all of those. I, I'm with you. Ohio State is similar to something that I've liked the last couple of weeks is finding those games where, like what you said, if Ohio State doesn't score that much, then the game's not going over. Like Nebraska, you and I, I took the under last week because it's like if Nebraska's not scoring that, they're not getting their mm -hmm. Iowa week one, which they tried their hardest to, to score 41. They mm -hmm. stopped at 40, though, so – uh, I'm with you on those. I think it'll be uh, a better week for you. Our K-State BYU best bets for the week. DY also going with the under of 47 and a half. And uh, I, I looked at the seven and a half and I liked it for the Cats. So six and a half is even better. Uh, I don't care the number. Give me K-State. I think they win by 10. Yeah, for me, it's Avery Johnson's first true road start in a raucous environment. And same with some of the pieces on that offensive line or a lot of the offense in general. I don't know BYU's defense is good, but if they're average, I could see Kansas State kind of sputtering a little bit on that side of the ball. And I just – I don't think Kansas State nosedives on defense. If they don't nosedive on defense, I don't trust Retzloff to put this game over 47 and a half. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, all right, let's dive into it. K-State, BYU, 9.30 Central Time, 8.30 in the mountains if you're going to be in Provo or somewhere – in the nearby area for the 13th ranked Wildcats trying to get the job done and start 4-0 and would actually be the first time Chris Kleiman has ever started 4-0 and at K-State because both times he started 3-0, and they lost coincidentally at Oklahoma State. So fortunately, not Oklahoma State, but it is a road game as they face BYU. Uh, what's your score prediction and who are your game MVPs? If I remember correctly, both times they started 3-0, and they actually lost both of their first two Big 12 games and fell to three and two. So let's yes. hope that doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think Kansas State scores enough to win, but I think BYU has the ball in the final possession of the game with a chance to win. And Kansas State's defense wins the game while on the field last. K-State 27, BYU 21. And I don't think BYU kicks field goals because uh, Kalani Satake will just be aggressive and go for it. Yeah, uh, I said earlier, I think K-State by 10 is the play here. Uh, I am going to take K-State 27, BYU 17. So I'm with you uh, in terms of thinking it might be a little bit lower scoring, but I think K-State is able to at least kind of keep it in somewhat of a comfortable manner at the end, not have it be as dicey uh, against Tulane like it was where BYU might there. be scrambling down the stretch to, to just try and make it close and get to the onside kick. I hope uh, you're right. I'm, yeah, I'm hoping it's not uh, like that. Offensive and defensive MVP if K-State is to win this game. Uh, what way are you going? Because I think for me, defense, I've kind of bounced around all different parts of this. We talked about how turnover prone a guy like Red Slaff can be. I think this comes down to the pass rush, and it's a guy that has really busted out this year and bit everything K-State needed. I think it's got to be Brendan Mott. Uh, Brendan Mott's my guy, too actually. So we'll go, we'll double up on that one. Yeah. He's been, he's been their best defensive end by far. He beat a really good Arizona offensive tackle a few different times the last Friday. That was very impressive. You got to have a pass rush and be disruptive. BYU's offensive line is pretty solid. I will say even losing their, uh, what it was a second or third round pick Kingsley Suamatia yeah. I don't know, uh, to the chiefs actually. Uh, but I like Brendan Mott here. It'd be easy to take a DB, but I think if a DB gets a turnover, it's probably because of the pressure of the defensive line. So I'll go Brendan Mott, and then running, and then on offensively, I I think this is a game you put on DJ Giddens. I, honestly, um, mm -hmm. 
I know the QB run game can be exploited here and you have Avery Johnson, but it's his first start in this kind of environment. So I think that maybe they try to lean on DJ Giddens to take the pressure off of him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, give it to your guy and hope he, hope he carries you to the promised land. Makes sense to do it in Provo, Utah. Uh, offensively, for me, I think this is a game where you're right. It's going to be kind of a running back type deal. DJ Giddens, it makes sense. Also, uh, natural grass game for K-State at BYU, so they'll uh, contend with that. It'll be interesting to see exactly what the surface is like uh, come, uh, I guess, what, that'll be late typically, Saturday night. It's typically a slower surface. Yep. yep. So uh, DJ Giddens certainly would be the guy to do that. But I think somebody else that probably needs to come through and have a, a big game for K-State, you're going to need one of the receivers to to step up and make a play. And, yes, you could go Jace Brown. Um, but I think that based on how things are trending, I think Keegan Johnson puts together a game where you get Every some crucial one. catches again. You're going like, to keep swapping simultaneous weeks there with Keegan yeah. and Jace? Well, you look, this Jace is in week one. Keegan in week two. This is one of those where I think that Keegan is a little bit more of like a – can be a more reliable like, okay, he's going to get you your chunks right here as opposed to Jace Brown has more of the big play in him. But even last week, it was just two catches for Jace Brown. I liked the two catches, though. Like they were – or excuse me, Keegan Johnson. They were significant in the grand scheme of things. So I think he's he's taking those steps that people wanted to see. Also, one final thing I want to mention, you talked – K State offensive line, real quick, and, and mention them out there. Um, for reference, the K State offensive line held Tulane to no sacks and just three tackles for loss uh, in the game uh, a couple weeks ago in New Orleans. Against Oklahoma, the Tulane defense recorded three sacks and five tackles for loss uh, in that game. They also were able to uh, come away with an interception. So, that's a good kind of indicator, I think, of – look, I was hard on the offensive line. I think they struggle a little bit against Tulane at times. But Tulane's got a pretty salty defense uh, and can and can make you do some bad things. So I wanted to give a shout-out to the offensive line because they played far better against the two, uh, Tulane pass rush uh, than what Oklahoma did just last week. And I agree with your King and Johnson point. I think he's the best blocker on the perimeter easily for Kansas State, and I honestly think – People are probably going to look at his numbers, but like, eh, he's still kind of not there. He's playing a lot better than what yep. those numbers indicate, too. Yep, he's been better this year. All right, as we wind things down, Big 12 scoreboard time, highlighting some notable games throughout the Big 12 this week. DY, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see who you think wins and get a quick thought from each of these on you. We start 11 a.m., big time, loser leaves town game, KU West Virginia. Uh, the Mountaineers are two and a half point favorites. Who do you think comes out with a much needed second win this season? Traditionally, you would just take West Virginia because they are the home team in this situation. But I think as bad as Kansas has been, I think they've been better than West Virginia. Like if they could just pick up a fumble, they're probably three and zero. Oh. So I would take the Jayhawks. I'm with you on KU because similar to the K State defense, the KU problems that are the difference between them winning or losing a game are, I think, a lot smaller than the problems that West Virginia has that have led them to one and two. Another 11 o'clock game, fascinating for some, disgusting for others. Houston at Cincinnati, the Bearcats, three-and-a-half-point favorites. Again, a game where you probably should just take the home team, but I'll take the better coach, even if I don't think they're the better team. Give me Houston. I'm with you on Houston for the exact same reason, and I have a soft spot for Donovan Smith. Don't know why, but I always feel like he's going to come through for me at some point. Uh, which should maybe scare people since I just compared Jake Rett's laugh to him. Uh, afternoon window starts with Arizona State at Texas Tech. Three-and-a-half-point home favorites for the struggling Red Raiders despite their 2-1 and one record. Uh, do the Sun Devils get to 4-0 and with a big road win? I will probably pause on that just because I, I would imagine the Texas Tech environment's good enough to give them a little bit more problems than they have faced this year. Arizona State might still cover. I might take them to cover, but I would. I think I would take Texas Tech to win, and I think their backs are against the wall. They certainly were last week, and they played a pretty good game, even if it's against North Texas. Yeah, I'm torn here. I, I really want it to be Arizona State. I could see it happening, but I still think there's something there where Tech could reach back, elevate. They should be able to win at home against Arizona State, uh, even though I do 
Uh, again, soft spot situation for the Sun Devils. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we go down to Stillwater, Oklahoma, up if we're talking about Lubbock, Texas, but down from where we're at. For 3 o'clock, big showdown on Fox, Oklahoma State and Utah, a top 15 matchup in the Big 12. The Pokes are one-and-a-half-point dogs at home to the Utes where Cam Rising is expected to play. Very torn here. I wouldn't bet a side here personally, just money-wise. That's why I took the under if I'm going to take anything. But if you force me to take something, I'll take Oklahoma State because Utah finds out why it's so hard to win in Stillwater. I kind of think I side with you, even though I'm skittish about me what too. Oklahoma State has loaded up. It's just and, it, and, you're going to get Oklahoma, punched in the mouth your first Big 12 game on the road, as Arizona found out. Yeah, Oklahoma State's just a tough place to play. Uh, tougher than most places Utah have faced in the Big 12 or Pac-12, yeah. maybe all of them. And my one like reservation is like what should be the best part about Oklahoma State has not been. Yeah. Ollie Gordon is struggling. Well, I'm just telling myself that he's a sleeping giant and he's going to wake up this weekend yeah. against the Utes. So, uh, yeah, for for I think the benefit of K State, you would also want Oklahoma State to win this game because then K State gets the chance to beat O State the next week. Yep. Battle for the Iron Skillet. This could be the penultimate matchup for a long time. TCU minus two and a half at SMU. You guys know that I like the Frogs already. Uh, where do you stand on this game? I'll follow you, but I'm more so fading SMU. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Battle of Sonny Dykes against his old school and Rhett Lashley leading the Mustangs. Final Big 12 game to note. I left Arkansas State, Iowa State off of here because we do not care. Uh, but this is a fraud bowl. The two leading coaches on fraud warning, Deion Sanders, Dave Aranda, the Buffaloes, one and a half point favorites at Folsom Field. I think we're probably on the same page on every single one of these games. I think so. Um, these teams are similar, except Colorado is more top end talent and they're the home team. Unless Dion finds a way to coach himself out of a win, I think this could even be more than a one possession victory for Colorado. I am with you on that. I think this could, this would be a wake up call to Baylor and everything going on there. This, this really could be like, a Colorado coming out party where people go, oh, they beat them by three scores or something. Yep. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if it went whatever direction just because, again, I don't trust the coaches involved. Uh, but Colorado has way more talent, and I think I think the Colorado defense might kind of be for real. We'll see uh, if everything else comes I'm along. I'm not there yet. I'm not there uh, yet. Okay, all right, that's fine. They're more for real than they were last year. I take them more seriously than I would have a year ago, and that's about all they're looking for. But that is a look at your Big 12 scoreboard, our thoughts on everything going around the Big 12 this week. And bonus pick, do you think Timmy McClain can keep it inside the 21 and a half at Iowa State this weekend? Yeah, maybe. Like, I'm not, I'm not really, like, can – conviction no conviction I, I i struggle to take iowa state on big numbers because they yeah. don't have a high powered offense i mean they only beat ohio 20 to 3 or whatever that ended up being low, low scoring so um, they found a way to break through enough against iowa but it hasn't translated to their other game and this is only game three after that bye week last week so it'll be interesting to follow along but that will do it for us today our main focus k-state byu tomorrow night from Provo, late kick, 9.30 Central Time as the 13th-ranked Wildcats, looking to start 4-0 for the first time under Chris Kleiman as K-State tries to uh, pull off the victory on the road to start Big 12 play. Yet again, I know some of you have thought about that uh, long and hard about how once again K-State starts conference play on the road. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching the KSO Show. If you want K-State online coverage all the time, go to On3, find KSO, and also make sure – that you're a member there and also subscribe right here to the KSO YouTube and podcast platforms to make sure you're getting a steady flow of wildcat in your diet each and every day. So we're out of here. We will talk to you again tomorrow night after the cats and Cougs end it. Uh, I guess I should say uh, Sunday morning, cause that'll be really the time it is when we're talking to you, but either way, be on the lookout. We'll have you covered in Provo all weekend.